on this episode of Bad Forgive the Sports. Tell me about what it meant for you to represent your country. Words can't explain it. When you walk out in the stadium and like 40,000 people screaming, I was like, wow, man, you just ran away with the games. Would you say that your Nigerian upbringing had something to do with this mentality that you Oh, had? yeah, most definitely. Those Niger 16 years. <laughs> yeah, Nigerians, we think we could do anything. We feel like, and we believe in God as well, you know, we feel like God can make us do anything. What's going on, African sports fans? Welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Chris Kosizi Strawn, and today our travels brings us to London, England. Sit down with Nigerian sprinter, Shei Ogunlewe. Shei, what's going on, bro? How you doing, man? I'm well, how are you? Very well, thank you. Nice, nice. Off camera, yeah. you started telling me about how crazy Nigeria is. <laughs> I need to know about all of that. You gotta uh, tell me what it was like growing uh, up there, bro. Um, It was trouble, man, just kids trying to maneuver their way of life every day. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the major thing about Nigeria is the fact that the kind of friends you make down there, mm. it's everlasting, man. The friends that you make down there just go with you all through your life. But um, the good part of it is the culture, you know. Yeah. You always know how to speak to people, how to respect people, how mm. to respect your environment. You know, your family teaches you all that and the food as well. So mm. you don't realize that until you leave. Until you leave, yeah. You know, but it's not chaotic in some way, but it's, yeah. it's, it's good. It's a good place. Was the upbringing <clears throat> difficult or were you guys well off? Um, from the kind of family I come from, it was not difficult because I come from a decent family. Mm. You know, I'm grateful to God for that as well, you know, but there were difficult parts as well, you know, like when I went to boarding school, it was different, you know. It didn't matter who your parents were. You had to go through what everyone was going through, you know. So that was a bit difficult. But apart from that, it was just basic childhood, you know, playing football on the streets, yeah. getting your toe cut off, you know. Yeah. So soccer was your first love? Yes. I used to play football. Man, I was obsessed with football, man. I'm a mm. big Manchester United fan. Okay. So huge Manchester United fan. If anyone knows me, they know that. Manchester United is my, my, my team, but they're not doing well now, so but let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, football, man. I used to play football. I was very good. Mm -hmm. I used to be very good. I thought I was going to play football professionally. Unfortunately, I do track now, so... Yeah. Wait, so how did that transition happen? Were you, were you the fastest kid out there all the time? Um, it was in high school. You know, I used to run. I used to play basketball as well. Mm -hmm. I used to play football. And in 2007, um, I used to run in my school. I used to run for my school. And we went to um, this inter-school championship and I won. Mm. And I got picked to run for Nigeria at the World Schools, secondary school championships in France. I realized that that was the way. Also, thinking about it, um, part of the things that made me do track was the fact that I went to school in Ireland. You could not play football in Ireland till the summer term. Oh, wow. So you had to wait from August when you start school all the way till about April mm -hmm. to play football. And in between that period, you had to find something else to do. So I used to play basketball and I used to go to this track club in Selbridge mm -hmm. where I started learning how to run. Mm -hmm. So if I came to England and I could play football all, all, all through the year, mm -hmm. I might have played football. Why did you even go to Ireland? Uh, my sister, my sister was a doctor in Ireland. So when I finished school in Nigeria, um, we were talking about different things that we like walking chair, do you can you go to London? Mm, there's no one in London to take care of him. Mm. Uh, oh, we can go to Ireland. I didn't know what I was expecting, but yeah. oh my god. That was hard. What's that like? How do you go from Nigeria to Ireland? It was hard, it was hard. I can't even lie to you. It was very difficult. Culture change was extremely difficult you know i can imagine trying to adapt to a different system they're not english mm -hmm. the irish people yeah lovely people after you get to know them but first in the first few years like it was a bit standoff like where are you guys coming from like what's going on here who are these guys you know mm -hmm. but i had to adapt you know 
I'm very good to adapt in situations I'm in, mm -hmm. you know. And sports was a, was a key. Ah. You know, sports made me that guy, you know. Oh, it's a fast guy from Nigeria. Yeah. It's a guy from Nigeria could play basketball. So that just, that helped me a lot. So when you, when you said it was tough coming in those first couple of years, did yeah. they not just accept you with open arms? Um, it was not that. It was just the culture. It was cold. Mm. My God, it was ridiculously mm -hmm. cold. You just finished telling me how hot oh it is in Nigeria God. all the time. It was, I sleep with like this big jumper and like socks and <laughs> just big tracks and bombs. And everyone yeah. used to think like I was going crazy, but I was like, yo. You understand? <laughs> you don't get where I'm coming from. It yeah. is cold down For here. Real. The food as well, you know, tons of potatoes, you know, mm -hmm. gravy. It was different. You know, there was no Nigerian food. I had to adapt to that. Oh, wow. Nah, there was no Nigerian food. You know, it was back then where Nigerian food, like African food, was not really common. Mm hmm you know, before you could get it, it was really expensive. But um, it was it was difficult, man. But after the first few years, you know, I just adapted to every situation and I got used to it and it was fun at the end of the time. So there was there was no jollof rice? No, there was none. no pound of yen for you? Man, every time you found jollof rice, it was like gold, man. Yeah. It was gold. So your sister couldn't even whip it out? You she did, it she did. She did a few times, but she, man, she was trying to be a doctor, so. Oh, right. She was, she was, was studying. Yeah, it was difficult for her as well. But whenever she did, man, it was, you used to keep that, like you have a spoon and just keep it. And just, it was, it was, it was good, man. So would you say Ireland is where you found this love of sprinting? Uh, yes. You know, I found out like, cause this is, this is a random story. There was a day I was running for this club. Mm -hmm. And everyone was always fascinated about my speed. But I didn't really think it was anything, it was a big deal. Yeah. But looking back at it, maybe they just were just not good enough, you know, <laughs> at the time I was just better than them. There was this lady that came up to me, I was like, you know you could do this professionally. Mm. I was like, what do you mean? Like, you know you could actually run and make money out of it. I was like, how, what do you do? She was like, oh, I think she moved to like a country where they take track more serious than Ireland. Mm. So I went back home and I thought about it. I was like, mm, okay, I get what you're saying. But after, in 2010, when I qualified for the World Juniors, this is without doing any training. Mm. Natural, so was, guy given ability. just natural, because I was in school. Yeah. And I used to train Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And I, when I qualified for the World Juniors, I realized, okay, okay, maybe you could actually use this, you know, so. This is something. Yeah, so I decided to move to England. And yeah, the story continues. So is that when you realized that you yourself could be a pro? Be outside of someone <clears throat> telling you? Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that was when I actually found out, okay. Cause I was doing it just for fun. I won the Irish school championships in two years. So my first year I won the Irish school championships, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. My second year I won it, I broke all the records. You know, the West Leinster record, the Leinster record, the Irish school record. Mm. Then I ran 21.50 at the West Lancers, which made me qualify for the World Juniors in Canada. Mm -hmm. And after that, I just realized, okay, I didn't need to do any strength training, nothing. Yeah. And there was a guy who took me on, um, Ian, Ian Graham. I still talk to Ian, I still follow him on Instagram or not. Mm -hmm. And he started doing my strength program. Mm. And I just, there was a surge in my performances. I was stronger than I used to be. So I realized, okay, you need to actually do this properly mm -hmm. to get what you have to get. And I already had a lead way with track. Yeah. So I just said, oh, I just continue what you're doing. And I came to school in England and the rest is history, man. Ian put you on. So what is it that you were doing that was so different from everyone else? Because obviously God gave you this natural ability to yeah, be faster yeah. than everybody. Yeah. What is it that puts you over the top in your training? I could work, man. Like, I have the mentality of, yeah, God gave me a talent, but you have to actually... It, it got to a time whereby talent could not help me anymore. Mm. You know, especially when I came to England to start running. Mm -hmm. Everyone was tall, strong, mm. big, fast. Mm. It was culture shock as well for that. And it just made me realize, okay, Che, you have to start training. And you have to start training hard. You know, like the training you were not doing in Ireland has caught up with you when you're in England here. So I had to start training. I had mindset like, of a champion. I actually felt like I could do anything I set my mind to do. Mm -hmm. You know, that was what made me feel like I could achieve anything. They say hard work beats talent when, when talent, talent doesn't, doesn't work, work hard. hard. Yeah. And that was you. That was me, man. I tried to work hard and, 
you know, had the mental capacity to say, listen, I can achieve anything I want to achieve mm -hmm. because I didn't actually plan to do this. Mm -hmm. I came here to school. Like I started running, when I started running, I was talking to someone about this the other day. I started from like 10, nine, all the way to now. Like it's been the journey of continuous improvement. And I'm grateful to go for that. Would you say that your Nigerian upbringing had something to do with this mentality that you Oh, have? yeah, most definitely. Those Niger 16 years. <laughs> yeah, Nigerians, we think we can do anything. Yeah. Nigerians, like, <laughs> we have that work ethic, you know, that I could do anything. I don't care how I'm going to get it done. I could do anything I set my mind to do. So that helped as well, you know. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, Niger like, we have that Nigerian spirit, man. Mm -hmm. We feel like, and we believe in God as well, you know, we feel like God can make us do anything. Mm -hmm. But when I went there, I had, okay, God can make you do anything, but you have to work. Yeah. So it has to go hand in hand. Yeah. You know, not just praying, praying and fasting. You work. Yeah, you have to work. Mm -hmm. So I put that together and listen, it's been a journey, man. Let's keep going down that journey. I have another puzzle piece for you. Yeah. The British University uh, College. Championships. You finished runner up. Three times? Hey, that's, oh my God. I that forgot, burns, doesn't I even it? forgot about that. So, <laughs> but then you came back and you won it though. Oh yeah, so my first year, <laughs> it was this championship that used to happen every year. But luckily for me, my school found out I could run. So they started to support me mm. here and there. They didn't really think I was fast, but I was like, listen, I'm, I'm the big, I'm going to yeah. be good, blah, blah, blah. I was telling them, He's like, who's this guy talking this like this game? Who's this guy saying? I said, listen, I'm gonna be good. You guys should support me. Blah blah blah. And we went for this. It's called box championships mm -hmm. in Sheffield. And the first one I went for, I said, listen, I'm coming here to win. I think I, I came second. Mm -hmm. That burnt. I was like, wow. The second one, I came second again. Mm. This guy that kept beating me, man. This one dude? This one guy. Mm. Tremaine. I actually saw him a few. I don't think he runs anymore. He's a, he's a physio now. Mm -hmm. The third time, he beat me again. Mm. I was like, what the heck? Like, I didn't care after some time. I was like, listen, I'm just going <laughs> to keep training. Yeah. The yeah. fourth time, I, I knew I was going to win. Because, listen, he, like, there was no... You're not going to beat me four no, times. No, 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 no. And I won the fourth time. It was, it, was, it was overwhelming, man. I have, I think I have seven or eight box medals. Mm. I won the British champion, school championships, outdoors as well. So, man, I did well in the British college system, man. Mm -hmm. I did very well. There was another puzzle piece that, you, that we want to add where you were called up to be a part of the Nigerian team. Tell me about what it meant for you to represent your country. The first time I got called up for Nigeria was in 2012. I made the team, but I was a sub, mm -hmm. so I didn't run. Mm. You know, so I was just watching. And we had to run a relay. And that relay would qualify us for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. This was 2012 where I thought I was going to make the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know there was another way for me to make the Olympics through the relay. Unfortunately, we didn't make it. So 2013, I got injured. And 2014 was the time I actually made the team, like, officially. But I was still a sub <laughs> for the relay. And there was this official who came up to me. This was like... The Commonwealth Games in Scotland, and he said, "Oh, like Shay, would you like to do the 200 meters tomorrow or next tomorrow?" And I was like, uh, "Yeah, why not?" Like, like he said, "Yeah, we don't have anyone to do 200 meters. Would you like to do it?" I was like, "Yeah, why not? Put me in." So I was, I was freaking out though, because I didn't think I was gonna run. I just felt like I was just coming there to just chill, <laughs> just watch. And yeah, I ran 200 meters in 2014, Commonwealth Games. I think I came fourth in my heat. You know, but looking back at it, I was like, wow, if I actually, if I actually worked out for this, I, I could have made it to the semifinal. Mm -hmm. Were you proud of yourself during that moment? Uh, not really. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was just... Why not? I felt I would have been more proud if I deserved to run. You know, I just, I was, I was just wet. Like I was not meant to run. So I was not, I didn't prepare for it to say, all right, okay, you're going to the championship to run the 200 meters. It was just like a day before mm -hmm. they said, okay, Shay, you're running. 
But don't forget, I already made the team in 2012. But I didn't run. I went to the African Champs in Benin. But I didn't run. So I was... Mm, yeah. I was like, bro, mm, not really, man. Mm. Nah, I was... I, was I'm, I don't really get too excited, man. So take me to 2016 yeah. in Rio. And you had the, the opening ceremony. Oh, man. It was... Oh, like, words can't explain it, man. Words can't explain it. When you walk out in the stadium and like 40,000 people screaming. Yeah. That was... That was at the time, you don't realize it, but when you fin when you when, you when I back. finished, I was like, "Wow, man, you just ran to the Olympic Games. That's huge." Hmm. So, from then on, I was just like, "Okay, cool. You've done this now. Now it's time to actually start doing things that people wouldn't realize. Okay, this guy's this guy's coming." Mm -hmm. Don't forget, I was doing this against all odds, man. Right. I was like, I was doing this against all odds. My country did not really support me. Mm -hmm. Like, as I said, like, the journey has been, been strange, man. It's been a strange journey. And I felt if it actually went the way I wanted to go, I would have achieved way, way, way more than what I've achieved right now. Yeah. But as I always say, it is part of the journey. It is. It's part of the story. Oh, man. You know, so... It, it's the way God has set up my story exactly. to be. So this is how He wrote it, yeah, right? Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. So supposed I can't, to go through everything, uh, every single thing that you went I know. through, up, down, everything. So it's building you up. I know. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm grateful to God, and mm -hmm. I'm happy. That's what I've come to. Tell me about how you how you got to that point. I know you did a, something on social media to raise some money. Oh right, right. No, no, that was not me. Like people should get this story missed. <laughs> like let me hear that. So it was, it was. This lady who's run for Nigeria, her name is Regina George. Um, they picked the team. We already qualified for the Olympic Games, and she, <laughs> we got this email that says, "Oh yeah, pay your way down to Rio, and we'll reimburse you when you get to Rio." Oh. And flights from America to Rio was about three or four thousand dollars at the time because it was the Olympic Games. Yeah. So prices of flights were just going up, mm -hmm. and. She was like, yo, I don't have this money, so how am I going to get to the Olympic Games? So she said, I'm going to set up a GoFundMe page, which she did. And it just, I just decided to, I just saw it, I was like, what? Then I reached the page saying, listen, Nigerian athletes are paying their way to Rio. Like, this is sad. Mm -hmm. I didn't, like, it just went viral. Whoa. It just caught fire. It was just going. It just went, like, it blew up. Mm hmm and everyone was just saying, no way, like how can Nigeria want to pay their way? Want the athletes to pay their way to, to the Olympic Games, like this is the Olympic Games, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, well, we didn't pay, but <laughs> we finally someone said, okay, cool. Yeah. We're gonna pay. So it made it happen. So it was good to see that actually my voice was a stepping stone mm -hmm. to helping what do what was right. What part of the journey do you appreciate the most? Wow. We get the Olympics, man. Yeah? Yeah. That was different. That was... That was like, wow. Mm. That was big. Talk about what it meant. Um, at the time, it didn't mean anything. Mm. Because in life, as I always say, when we get to our goals, we, we set different goals. For instance, your goal was to get here today. Right. You're here. Your next goal will be to leave here. <laughs> Your next goal will be to go to bed. Yeah, small next, goals. Yeah. So I got to the Olympics and my goal was to run faster at the Olympic Games. Yeah. And when I didn't do that, my next goal was like, oh, okay, I'm going to come back strong. Mm -hmm. But after everything, you know, when I sat back and just visualized how what actually happened, and I was like, wow, mate. You were in Nigeria five years ago. Mm -hmm. You were running 10-9 a few years ago. You went to Ireland, you went to school, you studied law and politics, you, you done all these things, and you went to Olympic Games. Man, like, and people were like telling me, man, you, like, people were more hyped than me. Yeah. And so I was like, wow, what's the reason why these guys are hyped? People are always more hyped than you, I'm noticing. <laughs> well, to be honest, <laughs> do you know, I don't really hype myself. I'm just, I always keep it myself and just mind my business. Mm -hmm. But thinking about it, I was like, wow, that was big, man. Mm -hmm. 
you're at the Olympic Games. That's big. If you were to speak to a young a young kid right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. who's who's thinking about taking your same path, yeah. Tell them about the ups and the downs and, and what you have to fight through to um, get through it. Most of the time, like young kids nowadays don't want to go through the downs. You know, everyone thinks like everything is gonna be perfect. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna train hard, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna make money, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the Instant best. Instant gratification. No, 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 no. Like you have to work, man. There's times at the mountain tops where everything will be fine. There will be times that, like, it's the journey that makes you who you are. You know, remembering the days where, oh my God, like, I came last. Mm -hmm. Wow, that feeling. I never want it to happen again. Then you come third. Ah, oh, almost won. Mm -hmm. That feeling. Then you win. Then you get injured. Then, man, it swings you different. So it's a mindset, like, it's what you're thinking, how you're feeling, the people you have around you, you know, the support system, what you want for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, that makes you who you are. So advice to any young person who's trying to be an athlete for anything in life, mm -hmm. you know, it's not straightforward. It can never be straightforward. You know, if Bill Gates or one of these guys is saying they were poor as anything back in the day, who am I to say? Right. I can't suffer before I, like, it's, everyone goes through that journey. Yeah. You know, they could ask any other person who's born or who's, you're saying, Bo, was injured for a few years. Yeah. You know, he came third. In the first Olympics, I, came, I thought he got, I think he got knocked out in the semifinal. Mm -hmm. You know, if he said, oh, I got knocked out, I'm going home, that's it. He wouldn't be Usain Bo today. You know, so you have to go through those yeah. paths to get to where you want to get to. I appreciate you, man. It's a pleasure, man. It's Africans in Sports. <laughs> That's your guy right there. I'm your guy right here. You already know what it is, man. We out of here. Africans in Sports, baby. <laughs> <laughs>